What's up, people? Hey! hey! How are you doing tonight? Awesome. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to bring up your MC for the evening. So help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Anthony McBrien. for the Cafe D of Open Night. Let's give it up for that. Uh, I, think, I guess we should also give a big thanks to uh, Joe for uh, setting this up. He's done a fantastic job. He does a really good job uh, setting a lineup and uh, all that stuff. It's good. It's good. It's a good time. It's good. How's it going? Hey. Nice hat. Thank you. Thank you. You're not looking bad. Sort of Jason Morass thing going on. Yeah, right. Uh, good talk. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I talk very well. I speak. That's that's why I'm standing in front of people with a microphone. I, I say words. Um, guys, let's get let's uh, let's get personal. Um, the uh, the first thing uh, that I ever masturbated to <laughs> was the music video for Salt and Pepper's Shoop. <laughs> Thank you, yes. First thing, I've, uh, I was like the sixth grade, I've always been very attracted to Peppa. Still to this day, very attracted to Peppa. Not so much Salt, she looks like Prince, it's weird. But Peppa, Du Peppa is like thick, you know. Like I like, th like there's something about her where I feel like I could take like a bite out of her ass and like she wouldn't even feel it. And uh, I, yeah, I know, I don't know why cannibalism plays a part of my attraction to Peppa. I mean, it's all this spices talk and you name your name, <laughs> you name your name with your band after a hip hop group. Um, Saw Peppa get hungry, I think. Um, yeah, but uh, like like black chicks, like them, and uh, like like them all, like all women. Um, I like uh, I like I like thick women, you know, like uh, what's her name? Uh, Christina Hendricks from Mad Men, the redhead. Yeah. She's like thick, ah, like there's so like I just want to yell at her or something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know this week, but I want to spend 24 hours in a bathtub full of milk with Christina Hendricks. And like, I don't, somehow that expresses what I want to do. I don't know why I realized the milk would get warm and start curdling, but fuck, like that's it somehow. Uh, but getting back to Peppa here, and my attraction with Peppa, I, uh, you can imagine then how excited I was when I, uh, I uh, when in college, I, uh, I got a black girlfriend. Uh, which is a bad way to say that as a white guy. Like, you can't say, like, ah, I got one. Like, that's bad. Uh, but, yeah, I, uh, you know, first thing, when you get a black girlfriend, as a white guy, like, you feel cool. Like, you didn't do anything, but it feels like you did something. <laughs> and uh, the other thing, it's a great one-upper in uh, conversations with other white guys. Cause you'll be standing around with a bunch of white guys and they're like, yeah, I voted for Barack Obama. It's like, oh yeah, touch the black girl and all the bins, who there is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works. But, um, sorry, man. Here's, here's the thing, though, that I wasn't prepared for. I was not prepared for uh, racism. Like, somehow I thought we were kind of done, but I don't know, apparently, I guess I'm just sort of ignorant. I mean, like, of course, like, old white people were racist. Is there anything they don't hate? I mean, really? Uh, but then, what I wasn't ready for was, like, young black guys were, like, threatening me on the street. And, I don't know, first off, the best thing about having a girlfriend is the fact that she's not a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you look around tonight, there's just men everywhere. Like, you can't get away from them. So when you finally get a woman to come close to you, you just don't want to bring any more men around. Does that make sense? So now I'm taking this girl, and, like, guys are like, hey, let's fucking wrestle. It's like, no, get the fuck away from me. 
Exactly. <laughs> You're defeating the purpose of a woman. Um, the other thing is that uh, this is my body. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is not good at uh, beating up guys. Uh, it is good at eating candy and eating candy. That is what it excels at. So, yeah, I mean, like, we'd be walking around the streets and, like, you know, these guys would be yelling at me and she'd be like, what, are you, you gonna let them talk to you like that? And I'm like, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> totally gonna let them talk to me like that. That's fine. So, uh, then I found 20 bucks. And that was it. <laughs> That, that's how you end a bit, where you don't know how to end it, you just... Every story that you don't know how to end, you just say, I found 20 bucks. That's a lesson learned if anyone wants to use it. Found 20 bucks. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's kick this off. One year anniversary, here we go. Your uh, first comic tonight, please give a warm round of applause for Mr. Melvin Johnson. I reached that my first club experience. I turned 21, so I thought I should go out to the club. That's the worst decision of my life. I'll never do it again. Because I found out black people are automatically the best dancers in the club anymore. We lost that throne to Asian people. We, and we messed up because we made the backflip a dance move. Like, we should have never done that. Like, every Asian person is 80 pounds and have aerodynamic haircuts. So they're flipping it even for them. They've been doing that. It's worse. Like, they took out the room. So, I thought, I'm not going to the club anymore. And on top of that, it was Chubby Chase tonight. And for the missing forms, like, Chubby Chase are men that go after big women, which I find an oxymoron, because when have you ever chased a Chubby person? They're like very docile creatures. It's like cattle. You can just put them in. Like, put a fishing line with a carrot, tap on the head, you got one. It's not that hard. So a big girl comes up to me and she immediately tells me her measurements. She says she's 48, 36, 48. I'm like, she's like, I'm the new Coke bottle. I'm like, I think you're the new two liter. Matter of fact, you're the shitty three liter that you only get from the dollar store. Like, the poor people know what I'm talking about and only the friends of the poor people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, no, man, yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so after like, after that, I go, wait, I go to the dollar store, and I try to realize that it's not real food anymore. Like, my friends try to convince me, but have you ever tried to donate anything from the dollar store? They'll send that stuff right back. They send a crate to Haiti. They, now they just want me a telephone. This is for like, this is So, oh man, this is crazy. <laughs> so, lost my train of thought for a minute. So yeah, the dollar store, crazy, never ever go there. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, a lot of people are um, concerned with the economy now. Like, I've already figured out how like Obama can get everything back on track is by putting a single mother in charge of the whole economy and give her $20. Like, I noticed from my mom, she got her hair done, her nails done, put a quarter tank of gas, buy three Tyler Perry movies, and still had enough over it to send my ass to school in the Crazy feet. <laughs> oh. I can't remember anything right now. I'm drawing a blank dude. Pretty bad. No cue card, I try to do it all the time of the day. Pretty bad. Oh. Oh my god. That's a weak that seat. Like, like loss of memory immediately. Yeah. <laughs> nah, not copping out with that weed. Um, I don't know. I think I have anything else right now. I'm just drawing a blank. It's good. Uh, Alright, that's my time, y'all. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, comics. Feel free to uh, bring your notes up, and uh, that's what this chair is for.
That's, that's, that's the purpose of the chat. Uh, but good job, get that guy a round of applause, that's good. Um, also, who's, uh, Jared or Joe? Joe's got the light? Are you doing the light? Yeah. Okay, uh, comics check out from Joe. Joe, of course, you get four minutes. Joe will give you a light. One minute, get off the stage. How's everybody doing? You doing all right? Popping gun in the front row. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's keep things going. Your next comic, Mr. Staz Nowitzki. Staz Nowitzki. Do I say that right? Is he here? Staz. Stays. S T A S. What? He's not here. All right. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, you're for the treat. You, you want me to tell some jokes? You guys want a joke? Yeah. Do you guys hear this story? Did you hear this story? There's a there's a story about this dog in uh, in Maryland swallowed a twenty thousand dollar diamond ring. Yeah. Wonder how long they waited for that diamond in the rough. Yeah. 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 Ah. Fuck. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We got a big man coming up here, a big, strong guy. <laughs> I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. James Paul. Word up. I'm pretty sure that's an accurate description because I'm standing outside smoking cigarettes and all these people keep trying to hand me their IDs and shit. <laughs> the chair is freaking me out. This first joke, if y'all don't mind, uh, is a little bit wordy, so I'm going to read it off of this, okay? <laughs> that shit's hilarious. So. I don't know if uh, y'all heard about this. I just heard about it recently, but it was rather entertaining. I thought I'd share with y'all. Evidently, Jessica Simpson had like a little dog which was snatched up and taken away by a coyote. <laughs> that is the correct response. <laughs> Yo, when I heard that news, I was like, you know what? Coyotes are fucking awesome. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a new favorite creature atop my creature list. Yeah, I got a creature list. <laughs> they used to be three-legged giraffe I saw at the state fair. He was cute, he kept trying to like bow but falling over. <laughs> Number two, that's what happens when you throw food at their feet. <laughs> Number two, Minotaur. Yeah. Right, enough said. <laughs> Number three, Rosario Dawson. I love it. Somewhere on that list as well are uh, cats. I think like number seven, maybe. <laughs> They're pretty far up there. Most people I know aren't really into the cats or whatever, but I dig them and I'll tell you why. Learned an interesting fact about cats, and that is that when cats are getting it on, fucking. <laughs> The, the male cat actually bites the female cat on the back of the neck, which paralyzes her, but at the same time turns her on while he's doing his thing. That's, that's fucking hot. You know what I'm saying? That's totally fucking hot. Like, I'm thinking about trying that. Like, I just gotta find the right cat, you know what I'm saying? Claude, preferably. <laughs> Willing, we'll see. we'll see. I like how just six comedians laughed at that. That was awesome. Okay, let's get serious for a minute. Say you have sex with a werewolf <laughs> while still in human form. Is that bestiality? <laughs> Because if it is, this Twilight Saga is about to get fucked up. It's weird. 
Bestiality is a crime. I don't know if you knew that, Adam. Not in Florida? Anybody want to move to Florida? I'm not a fan of bestiality. Uh, I, am, I did get in trouble with the law, uh, which I don't really get the point of. Like, isn't necrophilia really a victimless crime? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They say the only person I'm hurting is myself, but yeah, it feels good to me. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I don't do this very often, uh, haven't done it in a while, but uh, I'm not just a comedian, I actually have this talent that not too many people have that I can actually impersonate anybody, like no matter who, no matter who. So quick show of hands, I'll pick somebody, you give me a person, I'm going to fucking bam, impersonate them. Spot on. You were first, sorry. Wayne Newton, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, uh, this is gonna be Wayne Newton giving a hand job. You, you gotta warm your hands up. That's totally Wayne Newton, right? That's gonna do it for my impersonation portion of the show. Appreciate your time and attention on that one. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I'm going long. Am I going long? I hope not. Um, I got this new uh, get rich quick scheme I wanna share with y'all, see what y'all think. Um, I'm gonna find all the people in my local community that have narcolepsy. You know, they fall asleep randomly. Gonna sell them cocaine. <laughs> right? To help keep them up, you know what I'm saying? And if that doesn't work out, I'm gonna see if uh, anybody else wants to buy some cocaine. <laughs> I think I might be onto something. If that doesn't work out, uh, I got another great idea I'm pretty proud of. Uh, I'm gonna start a Christian rock band, only it's gonna be like more of a hardcore Christian rock band. Like I got two hits already, radio play hits. Uh, the first one is uh, Ain't No Bitch Slap Like The Lords. <laughs> and the other one is I Got Jesus In My Mouth, I'm Spreading The Word. <laughs> They're gonna be good. Gonna be good. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is a, such a thing uh, as smoking too much weed. There is. Y'all are laughing like you disagree, but I'm gonna prove to you right now that there is. See, I had evidently smoked too much weed. Decided to start building skyscrapers out of Legos. Okay? Then pretending to be a terrorist by flying my cock into buildings. <laughs> I'm just like, it hit Tower 2. A cock has hit the South Tower. And I made sure to videotape it so later I could be like, look at these secondary explosions. There's no way only my cock did that. Come on. There's no way. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Bill, yeah. There's an open debate going on right now that y'all can cast your vote on whether that's the best dick joke ever or the best 9-11 joke ever. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, before I go, um, I just wanted to say, uh, is it just me? Stupid fucking list. Is it just me or when black comedic actors dress up like women, they're pretty good looking? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like every time I can think of that a black comedic actor dresses up like a woman, like I'm pretty turned on. Like that fucking dude that plays Queen Latifah. <laughs> that dude is hot. I really appreciate everybody's time and attention this evening. Thank you so much. Yeah, give it up for Mr. Uh, wait, what is your name? James Bunk, yeah, that's a fucking fabulous names. Uh, you know who also is 
a good uh, comedic actor. That guy who plays Serena Williams. He's also pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Speaking of women, real women. Next comedian is a lady. Huh? Lady? All the way from Charlottesville, Virginia. Please do give her a warm round of applause. This is Leah Woody. Leah Woody. So yes, I'm from Charlottesville. I don't know if you guys have been there or not. It's a great little town. It's very cute, but uh, it's not the best place to be if you're single. I gotta say, it's a really small town. I don't know if anyone here in Richmond has this problem, but if you ever gone out with someone and uh, you really like them, and then you find out that not that long ago they slept with your best friend, that totally happened to my best friend. <laughs> single. I was in a long-term relationship, seven years. Seven years is a really long time to be with someone. Seven years. I tell myself that he was a complete dog, and then I'm like, that's only like one human year, right? Is that how that works? Seven to one? I don't know. <laughs> so my ex and I used to take a lot of road trips together, and uh, we went on this really fun, I thought it was going to be a really fun road trip. I thought it was going to be hilarious. There is a town in North Carolina called Climax, North Carolina. And you have to go through tight squeeze Virginia to get there. I thought that was going to be like the best trip ever. I couldn't wait to tell people, like, we're going to climax together for once. You know, so. <laughs> but it, did, it didn't go quite the way I expected. Like, I, he, I found out that he had to work, like, the night we were supposed to leave. And I'm like, dude, are you trying to tell me that I'm not going to climax tonight because you can't get off? <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. I was like, I'm going to Climax with or without you. Yeah, yeah the next morning I was on my way, and uh, we were on our way, and, and uh, totally was getting, he was getting lost left and right, and I was like, dude, if you want to get me to Climax anytime soon, you need to stop and ask for directions. <laughs> I know some shortcuts. I am happy to share them with you. Yeah, here's a really weird thing. We were in the same car. I don't know how this happened, but he got to Climax like 30 minutes before me. <laughs> I was like, that's it. This is over. So, uh, after we broke up, my friends were really super supportive. Everyone was so sweet. They like did all these great things to really like make me feel better and distract me from being like 30 and single again. Like, <laughs> yeah, <that> was... <laughs> yeah. They would like do cute things like um, like take me out for like a girls' night and like get engaged and have babies. That really distracted me from everything. I was really happy about that. Then uh, I, I gave Match.com a shot, not because I'm desperate, but because my mom paid for it. It was the greatest birthday present ever. I don't know. But uh, I, uh, I had a hard time going out with guys on Match. It was weird, because I thought they were all like psycho killers. So like when they were just trying to make conversation and be nice, I, I was like really freaked out. Like they were like, like this one guy was like, um, so do you like running? And I'm like, why, are you gonna chase me? <laughs> Yeah, it's not cool. I ended up uh, only going out with about three guys that I met on Match. The first guy was Born to Love UVA. That was like his name on Match. And uh, yeah, he was so, he was fun. You know, we would go out to bars and he, um, he had this really cute way of like, like making me feel like the most beautiful woman in the world just walked by. Like every, I was like, you don't have a wandering eye. You have a full wandering torso. Like his whole body would turn every time a girl would go by. Then I gave this uh, French guy, Frenchie, Siegel Frenchie, that was his name. He was really cute. He was hot in bed, I have to say. He, uh, the first time, though, it was a little weird. I was kind of freaked out. He was like, wee, oui, wee. Oui. I don't know what that means. He either wants me to pee on him or, like, he thinks it's the most amazing amusement park ride ever. And so I'm like, wee. Oui! Like, I'm, like, trying to join in with it. Yeah. That didn't work out very well either. And the third guy was the worst of all of them. Like, he, War and Peace, that was his name. He, um, he tried to convince me that the president had died. He was like, yeah, that's why I'm flying at half-mast. I was like, oh, that's sad. <laughs> so I realized that there are some things that I'm good at in bed and there are other things that I'm not good at in bed, so I get that. Um, like, I, I'm really flexible, but um, I'm not very good at talking dirty, so I always end up just putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> Aw, I'm Leah. Thank you so much. Leah Woody, everyone. Leah Woody. All right, guys. Look, I found Stas Nowitzki. All right, I found him. He's here now, and he's uh, gonna tell some jokes. Everyone, give it up for Mr. Stas Nowitzki. All 
Alright, hey, I'm Stas. Um, by the end of this, most of you will be calling me perverted, though. And by the end of the night, maybe one of you will be calling me daddy. Um, no, I think it's pretty sexy when girls call you daddy. It's a little weird when they call you dad, though. I think lesbians uh, call each other mommy. I'm not really sure. Um, uh, this is my first stand-up, you know. I guess I'm a comic now. It's a little weird, a little intimidating, you know, like, just point to you and be like, be funny. Oh, you can't? Fuck off the floor. You know? Get the fuck off the floor. I got a fake ID recently. Are you all ordering food right now? Alright, I got a fake ID recently. Um, uh, now I can go to Chuck E. Cheese and pick up 12-year-olds. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, I hang out with 16-year-olds sometimes. It's alright though. I make their parents sign permission slips. You know how it goes. Um, I think the flying squirrel slogan should be bust a nut, because there's nothing better to yell at a baseball game than that. Um, um, my coworker was telling me about this whale. It's got a nine-foot dick. Imagine when that whale comes, it could probably fill up this room. You know, if you're a scuba diver, you're probably like, this is like the underwater Milky Way. And then you're like, this is the saltiest bit of water I've ever been in. God damn. You know? Um, Y'all ever seen that Viagra commercial? The guy's walking down the street, and he's like, uh, oh, if you have erectile dysfunction, you should probably talk to your doctor. Shit, if you're talking to yourself in a mirror, you should probably talk to your doctor about schizophrenia. You know? <laughs> um, all right. So, I, uh, I was sitting in my room watching my neighbor's window. That's what I do. I stalk my neighbors all the time. <laughs> the lights were flickering on and off. I didn't know what was going on. One day, they left their blinds open, and uh, I realized they were having sex with clap on lights. <laughs> uh, that's it, man. I got you. Right, thank you. Give it up for Stas. Oh, stop. Ah, guys. Guys, uh, I got a question. I got a question for people here. Um, has anyone ever um, made an ass out of themselves in public? No. <laughs> has anyone ever done this? I, um, I, I just did this all the fucking time. Uh, again, I was, uh, I was standing in line at a coffee shop, right? Place is completely packed, dead silent. It's this little uh, mentally disabled kid standing in front of me, right? In the crowded coffee shop, this kid screams, I want to make a werewolf movie! Yeah. Unfortunately for me, uh, James wasn't there. So it was just me, laughing at this kid. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know if you have ever been the one person laughing at a retarded kid in public. It is not good. It is not good. It's like someone was like, hey, are there any assholes here? And I was like, yes! Hello, everyone! After this, I'll be punching single mothers. Oh, God. It was terrible. So I'm standing there, and I'm sweating, and I'm feeling awful. I'm like, I, like, I gotta do something. And like, she turns around and just gives me the filthiest fucking look I've ever seen in my life. So, I, you know, I, I stand there. Uh, I think it's something that I'm gonna say. And uh, I tap her on the shoulder, and I said, uh, Listen, ma'am, uh, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Uh, I was only laughing at him because I am also trying to make a werewolf movie! <laughs> she did not like that either. She, we will not be friends on Facebook. Uh, guys, we have another, uh, another lady. Give it up for the ladies, please. <laughs> This one goes by the name of Mrs. Wanda Lee Porter. Wanda Lee Porter, give it up. I was thinking about putting my big girl's shoes on and taking the mic into my hand, but I think we all know that's not going to happen. <laughs> Hi, my name's Wanda, and I'm a recovering overachiever. Hi, Wanda. Thank you for making it just like my pre-masturbatory <laughs> fantasy. Yes, <we> have. <laughs> it's been seven years, one month, and ten days since I've achieved my last goal, and it's with great pride that I stand before you tonight and share that. What sucks the most about being a recovering overachiever 
is that in order to be successful in my recovery, I must remain, tragically, unsuccessful. But on the upside, if my goal is to be unambitious and I fail, then I still get to be ambitious while working my program. <laughs> and my own enabler. I was going to wear a dress tonight, but I'm not sure you guys are ready to see me in drag yet, so. <laughs> Good to know I'm saving something, right? <laughs> I was thinking that if the person you're married to used to sleep with a friend of yours' wife, then maybe shouldn't you get to do that friend at least one time? <laughs> I mean, if the world were fair and balanced like Fox News, <laughs> would that, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, of course, Scott Wolf, um, I used to watch a lot of TV growing up. I don't know about you guys, Norman Lear should get some credit in my upbringing somewhere. And it caused uh, me to have some deeply rooted associations, these sort of like reflexive internal responses that I can't really always even control when I want to. For instance, if I'm greeted by a black man and he doesn't say, hi there, like Freddie Boom Boom Washington, I get a little disappointed. And I feel bad, but I do. Black men don't hit on me often. I don't know. It, it, you know. But I have really awesome black platonic friends who tell me the truth, so it, it's cool. Um, my friend Junior told me straight up one time, no titties, no ass, Wanda. <laughs> Gotta give a brother something to work with. The name alone ain't gonna do it for you. <laughs> like, all right, yeah. I love you because you tell me the truth. Should we do another shot of Patron? Of course we should. <laughs> Black men used to hit on me when I was pregnant, though. <laughs> I shot up to about 200 pounds, and like 175 of it was in my ass. <laughs> my ass went from the size of an apple to a large pumpkin, a, a county fair blue ribbon winning pumpkin. <laughs> then all the brothers were smiling at me, sweet. But when I started losing the weight, my friend Al looked me right in the eye like he was gonna cry, and he pleaded with me. He said, Wanda, please, please don't lose all that ass. <laughs> you were just starting to grow some titties. I love you, girl. Fist bump. I actually prefer tater touch to fist bump. I'm not a fan of fisting of any kind, really. I don't judge those that do. Blake, you know we're cool. Made me start looking at pre-Renaissance religious art in a completely different context when somebody scolded me on fisting. Art history jokes always kill. Just so you know, if this is your first time, just put that in your back pocket. You can count on that shit. I earned an art history, a uh, minor in art history when I was in college. I almost earned a minor in women's studies. I was one of those chicks who took the women's studies courses. But, um, you know, to be honest, there's only 15 credits worth of women's studies courses behind every vagina joke I write, so I'm not sure that qualifies me as an expert in academic settings. I always struggled with the papers in women's studies, but I aced all of my oral assignments. <laughs> only if I was looking for extra credit. <laughs> I think I'm on good. Thank you for indulging. I'm gonna give it up for Wana. Good stuff. Oh, she's got to that one. Um, all right, here's what I want to do before I bring up this next guy. I want to start a wave of applause. We're gonna start in that back corner of the room, and then we're gonna come all the way over here. We're gonna get this shit really loud. Are right, you ready? From the back corner. <laughs> <laughs> 